this is Fiber by Design. We're on episode 51 and this is actually like part one of 51 because as you can see my counterpart is missing, my wonderful co-host Sarah. We unfortunately, our families have both just been sick and soccer is starting for her daughter, mine soon, and we unfortunately just couldn't get together to podcast but we still really wanted to talk to you guys and show you what we've been working on. So we decided to try it solo. It's weird. It's really weird, you guys. I'm so used to talking to Sarah and you guys. And this is so hard. I feel like I'm just talking to myself and it's weird. I have so many props to give to all of you solo podcasters. I don't know how you guys do this. You're incredible. It's, yeah, it's so much easier when she's here. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can stick out, stick around and put up with this. Um, Sarah will be doing her own so you can watch her part in part two. So please, you know, stick around and go watch hers after mine's over. But um, quickly, just thank you to new and returning viewers. If you're new, thank you so much for checking us out. You should probably go back and watch some of the other episodes first so you can see how we do it together. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back, guys. It means so much that you guys spend part of your day and week with us and that you come back every time it's it's amazing and we couldn't say thank you enough for all of our wonderful subscribers and viewers and if you're not a subscriber push that button if you're if you like us so that you can get updates on when our next ones come out so I'm gonna start with thank yous today I have a couple um, first and foremost I have to say thank you so much to the grocery girls if you guys haven't seen their podcast yet, you absolutely have to. It's sisters, Jody and Tracy, and they, um, Sarah had given them a pattern, and so they said thank you to her for that, but then they just went on and said how much they enjoyed our yarn and our podcast, and they just said some really sweet things, so thank you both so much for that. Again, like I said, if you haven't checked out their podcast, you absolutely have to. It is quickly becoming one of my favorites. I adore them. I think they're great. I also want to say thank you so much to Shannon of Socks Etra. I do like you, Shannon. I'm sorry you thought I didn't. I actually really enjoy you. You remind me a little bit of Sarah. Your quirkiness and your your little random singing totally makes me think of her. So thank you so much to Shannon of Socks Etra. She mentioned us a little while ago on her podcast. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check her out either, you should totally do that. And then last but certainly not least, I mentioned a couple episodes ago that I was participating in a podcaster swap and I got my amazing package, you guys. So I wanted to share it with all of you. My swap partner was Jacqueline. She's known as Jacqueline Salem and she has the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out from my previous recommendation of the knitters in my neighborhood, you should go do that. She only has a few episodes, so if you wanna start from the beginning, you're kind of right along with her you know, you don't have too many to go back, but I really enjoy watching her. It's really great to see her DIY, DIY projects and just all the things she's knitting and just hearing about her life in general. She's super sweet and I really, I'm just really, really enjoying her. So she's from New York and so she said she wanted to send me a very New York, Brooklyn inspired package, which is amazing because I've always wanted to go to New York, so it's really kind of cool to have a little piece of New York from her. So, I got this great <clears throat> bag that says Strand Bookstore, and it's like the perfect like knitting notion or like sock project size. I'm super excited to use it. I haven't taken the, <laughs> the tag off yet. But this says it's their flagship store and it's at 1828 Broadway on 12th Street. So that's really cool. And I got a, let's turn the right a notebook, which is awesome because I love notebooks. I'm always writing down my dyeing notes or my knitting notes or just random notes like Sarah will call me and we'll be hashing something out. I'm like, oh, I have to write it down. So it's great to have another one. And then I got these absolutely amazing socks, you guys. They're subway socks, so they have the subway rails. But then they actually say subway on the toes. So I thought those were really great. 
I'm excited to wear those. And there's also this. I haven't really checked it out quite yet, so I don't know fully what it is. But it's called Brooklyn to Mars, issue one. So it's this little book. So that's really cool. And there was, there was chocolate in this. It's all gone now. This is sea salt chocolate, 70% cocoa, cane sugar, and sea salt. And it says it's made right there in Brooklyn. It was delicious. It's dark chocolate, my favorite. It didn't last long, so that was very yummy. And then I loved these. My kids have already asked if they can steal them, but I told them they had to wait. But they're little hamburger and hot dog erasers, you guys. How cool are those? <laughs> and then I got some Pop Rocks, cherry flavor. And then I got three packets of tea that all sound really delicious. There's a Victorian Earl Grey from Celestial Seasonings. And then also from Celestial Seasonings, a caffeine-free black cherry berry. Which the most, both of those sound really good. There's that one. And this one. And then this one she actually said is her favorite. This is from Tazo. And it says it's... Berry Blossom White. It's a delicate white tea with tinges of huckleberry and white cranberry. So that sounds really yummy. And then I got this really awesome postcard. And then there's two little mini skeins. And she was telling me that this little cranberry one is from the very first skein of yarn that ever introduced her to knitting. So that's really cool. And then she says the neon peach one is from her first non-scarf project. So I don't know if you guys can see it. There's actually like little hot pink in there. And yeah, there's a lot of light coming through over there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's hard to... The lighting. This is actually my second time recording this, you guys, because the first time I did it, it was great. Content was really good, which made me really happy. It was so dark, you couldn't see anything I was holding up. So I'm trying it again. I'm hoping it's better this time. We'll see. But, so anyway, I got those, and I'm really excited. It'll be great to add these two skeins that were special projects and skeins for her to my, um, I'm going to do like a podcaster slash knitting friend sock memory blanket at some point. And so it'll be great to have those to add. Sorry, crinkling. I'm trying not to have any crinkling. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Jacqueline. I absolutely adored everything in the package, and I'm really excited to use some of the little, some of the little goodies you sent me. So, jumping right in, I am for handmade wardrobe. Let's let's say what we're jumping right into. Handmade wardrobe. Today I'm wearing the Holden shawl by Mindy Wilkes. And it's knit out of two skeins from Olubes. This top silvery one is James Dean. And the beautiful blue variegated one is Blue Jean Baby Queen. And they are both from the very first club that Sarah and I ever released almost three years ago now. And I loved both of them so much when we got done dyeing them. I instantly knew that I wanted to put them together. And when I saw the Holden shawl, I thought that this would be perfect because it has these almost wave-like scallops in the lace. So I thought it would just be beautiful knit up with that. So I did that and I have to say out of all of my triangle shaped shawls, I probably wear this one the most because it is gray and blue. And those are two colors that I have a lot of in my wardrobe. So I wear it a lot and I love how drapey it is. I love, I love how elegant it looks without being too much of an accessory. So I think that's great. I definitely recommend the pattern. I think it's probably not the best beginning knitter pattern but if you've been knitting a while and you've, you know, done some lace and or yarn over 
detailing of some kind, then you would be fine with this one. It does have the Pico Edge, which as you guys have heard me say, I'm not a fan of, but I couldn't imagine this shawl without it. So I'm glad that I did do it on there. And then on my feet, I'm going to take it off because it's easier. I am wearing the very first sock pattern I ever designed. And uh, Sarah would be so proud because, look Sarah, it's not woven in. <laughs> I always give her a hard time. I never wove in the ends of these socks and I still wear them. This is my bookworm sock and it was inspired by part of um, a movie, Tinkerbell movie. My daughter Jillian loves Tinkerbell and all the movies and a couple months ago we were watching, I think it's The Secret of the Wings, and Tinkerbell is in the library or the archives or someplace and she's trying to find out information on why her wings are glowing. And so she goes in and she's looking at this book and she gets to the page she needs and she can't read all of it because the bookworm has gone and munched little holes in it and stuff's missing. So I was like, hey, how fun would it be to design a sock that had a worm or a cable running up it, leaving little holes? So that's kind of what I tried to do here. So I have this twisted cable here that runs all the way up the sock and then I have the little yarn over cables so there's little holes and then it carries over onto the back and on the back there's actually two of them that run up the back of the leg so there's the worm in the middle and the little holes that it's leaving and I really like the way they turned out they were a fun knit I think it's a fun pattern and I made these out of another club colorway that we dyed and I believe this one's either like Sock Monkey or Mr. Socko or something like that. So I have that on my feet. And I'm wearing them on my feet because I'm in my office while I'm recording. And it's really cold in here. <laughs> this room is always probably one of the coldest ones in my house. So I have them on because my feet are cold. But, so that's what I'm wearing today. Okay. Knitting. Let's see. Let's start with Operation Software. I do have some stuff. Not very much, but a little bit. So in my absolutely adorable little critters bag from Knit and Stitch Bits that Sarah gifted me, I cast on too many March socks. And I'm calling them March socks because I really want them to be done by March, or in March, so I can wear them in March. I only have a toe, so I haven't done a whole lot, but I am using Patton's Croy Socks FX which is 75% washable wool, 25% nylon, and this is the Clover's colorway. It's perfect for March. And here they are. I'm hoping that you guys can see better this time. The lighting was so bad the first time. I held this up and it was just black. So, there. You guys see that? Can you sit back here a little bit? <laughs> But it's beautiful. I'm really loving it. It's green and teal and bright pops of like yellow and orange and a cranberry and almost like a deep purple. So very fall, but also very perfect for March and just me in general. So like I said, I'm hoping to have those done in March so that I can actually wear them because I think they're perfect St. Patrick's Day socks. So. I'm going to try to get some more progress done on those. I am still working on the other Patton's Croy socks you guys have seen, the blue one and the pink one. I'm hoping to have the blue ones done here pretty soon because I'd really like to give them to my husband for Father's Day. So as soon as I get the green ones done, I'm probably going to pick the blue one back up since I only have the one sock left. Okay. Knit life. So I am so excited you guys I finished my Lalo it's done it's off the needles but I can't show it to you I'm so bummed it's right there it's blocking on the floor and I was really hoping it was going to be dry but it's not so you'll have to wait until next week and I will have the big reveal next week and you guys can see it I could not be happier with it I love the way it turned out but I do have one other thing if I can find them here they are I finished my son's Valentine uh, slippers 
since the last time we saw each other. And this isn't a really very fun project for you guys to see either because you've already seen one, but I did want to show you that they were both done. So I got both of them done. And again, this is the Seamless Saloma Slippers by Megan Williams that can be found on Ravelry. And I was actually holding the yarn triple on the bottom. So I held the Lone Star Arts Lucky Leprechaun in the blue with one skein of, it's either, I keep calling it Evan. I'm not sure if it's Evan or Ivan from Three Irish Girls on their adorn sock. So I held that down here, but then I really did want to be able to see a little bit of the rainbow color. So I didn't put it at the top and it does make it like almost like a two it almost feels like it's supposed to be that way because this is the base of the slipper and then this is the top. And they look really cute on him and he's loving them, you guys, which makes it even better. I asked him if I could have them today so I could show them and he kind of looked at me and he's like, I get them back, right? And I was like, yes, buddy, of course you get them back. He's been wearing them nonstop. He wears them to bed. He gets up in the morning and if they've fallen off, he roots around for them in his bed and puts them back on. He tried to wear them outside the other day and I said, oh no, you can't just wear those. You have to have shoes. So he took them off and put his shoes on, but it makes me really happy that he's liking them. And I did get them all posted for the rainbow along. So, and speaking of the rainbow along, guys, if you've been participating in the rainbow along in the Suburban Stitcher group, make sure you're getting your projects posted because that's almost over. It'll be over at the end of February. So, so I did get them done. So I have that. For whips, I really only have like one whip on the needles that I can show you guys, but I'm still working on my Ricky hat, which is still being housed in my absolutely adorable little flying unicorn bag from Stephanie of Stitch Marks to Spot. And this is the Ricky hat by Sarah Young. And this one is going to be for my husband. So I'm knitting it with two skeins of three Irish girls on their Springvale DK. This bottom colorway is the Katmandu. And then I'm striping in the Guinness colorway. And this will actually be my fourth Ricky hat, but I've never made one with multiple colors. So I think this little bit of striping detail will be kind of fun. And both of these colors are definitely colors that my husband wears a lot in his wardrobe. And he's been wearing my green one, so I think he'll be really excited to have one of his own. So I've got that going. I'm almost done with this stripe. I have about, I think, eight more rows maybe. And then I can start the decreasing when I add in the second stripe there. And usually this pattern calls for... I believe it's a five and a seven. I looked at the pattern and I think I've been telling you guys that wrong the whole time and I might still be telling it to you wrong. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I always knit mine on a seven and a nine because my gauge is so tight. So I am currently using my Haya Haya Sharps, my US size nine needle, and I'm using them on a nine inch cable. And then I used the Haya Haya US seven uh, seven, no, excuse me. Yeah. US seven, 4.5 millimeter for the brim. So and I'm really enjoying that knit. It's going much faster than the last one that I knit the one for my daughter, the Ollivanders one. And so I'm hoping to maybe have it done next week so you guys can see it. And then the last project I have for you, I haven't actually cast onto, so I don't really have any progress to show you, but I did want to show you kind of what I'm planning. So it is in this absolutely beautiful, gigantic drawstring bag that my friend Susan made for me. And I believe I got this almost exactly a year ago. We did a swap and she was one of my partners. And I think she was either my March or April person and each month had a theme and she gave this to me and I love this. It's perfect size for a sweater. So I think it's, it's really great. And the inside is these absolutely beautiful like dandelion things. So I finally found a sweater pattern. I, it's been over a year now, dyed a bunch of yellow yarn, which you can kind of see over here in the bottom of that little cubby to make a sweater. It's bulky. And Sarah and I both have been wanting to knit bulky weight sweaters. So we dyed up some yarn 
and I just had not been able to find a pattern that I liked. Um, I kept trying to decide if I wanted a cardigan, did I want just a pullover, did I want one that had a zipper, did I want pockets, I could not, I could not make up my mind. I couldn't decide what the yarn wanted to be. But this last week, I was like, okay, I really want to use it. I took it, I reorganized my whole office and put all my yarn up. And as I was sticking the yarn in the cubby, I'm like, I really want to knit with it. I want my sweater to be done. So I went some and did some more perusing. And I finally found one that I think I'm going to like. So this is the Pontos Cardigan by Hilary Smith Callis. And I'm sorry that the picture's not in color, you guys. But it is an open cardigan with buttons and pockets, but it's really long. So for me, I've decided I'm, I've taken all my measurements and I'm going to make the large size. So the length of the large size actually says it's going to be about 31 inches, which comes right about to my mid thigh area, which I think is going to be perfect. And I'm going to use my um, knit picks Yes, my Knit Picks Harmony, my Bamboo Harmony needles, and I'm going to use a US size 9 and a US size 10. And so it has this beautiful, really thick, like, collar and border, and then the whole body is like this mesh almost. So it'll be perfect for, like, those cool, crisp summer evenings when you're sitting by the campfire, but it'll be great into fall, and then even in winter because I can layer stuff under it and it won't be too hot and too bulky. And at any time of the year. So I'm really excited. And I, I have one of my cakes ready to go. So I'm hoping to have a little bit of progress done for you guys next week. So this is it. It's this really pretty like mustard yellow with some undertones of a kind of a green and even a little bit of a gray. So I'm hoping to have a little bit of that done for you guys next week. Okay, so that is all of my knitting, but I do have some mailbox madness. I'm excited, you guys. I finally received in the mail my very first, my very first, in the flesh, Desert Vista Dye Works. So I got the Bad Romeo colorway on her Viso base, which is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And this is a self-striping and it's a four color self-striping. Can you guys see that? It is like a cranberry and a hot pink and a raspberry and almost this absolutely beautiful like aqua mixed with seafoam green color. I think it's super pretty. It's a little more pink than I was anticipating, dependent uh, based on the picture. So I don't know if I'll actually make socks for myself, but my daughter will absolutely love it. So she might end up with those. But I'm really, I'm really in love with it. So, so I have that. Um, I don't have any other mailbox madness, which I think I'm waiting for a couple of things. It's one of those like. I think I have something else coming, but I'm not 100% sure. It's never a good place, but I find myself in that place a lot. So. I will move on to Knitters in My Neighborhood. Sarah and I have started doing the Knitters in My Neighborhood because we watch so many podcasts and we love so many of them and we want to make sure that we're telling all of you guys ones that we enjoy so that you can go out and enjoy them as well. So if you haven't had a chance to go back and watch the ones that Sarah and I have uh, recommended before, again, they are Sock Cetera, The Grocery Girls, uh, Brooklyn Knit Folk. I think that's it. I think we've only done those three. 100% recommend all of them. They're all very enjoyable, great to watch. This week, I want to recommend a new one to me as well. It's called Inside Number 23 with Katie, or KT as Sue refers to her. And I have to be honest, when I saw the name of her podcast, it drew, it drew me in because 
calling it inside number 23 and there's like a picture of her door or a door on her YouTube channel it totally made me think of Sherlock Holmes now her podcast doesn't actually have anything to do with Sherlock Holmes but that's what like I was like hmm it's very like mysterious in a way when you start watching her you guys she is so cute she's got this very vintage retro style and she's quirky and fun and she's got a lot of great information she's currently knitting a Weasley inspired sweater like the Ron Weasley sweater and she's putting her initial on it it's she's so cute you guys so I 100% recommend her again the name of that podcast is inside number 23 I'm really enjoying it she just put up her seventh episode so if you want to start watching her from the beginning you don't have very many that you'd have to catch up on and I 100% recommend going back and, and doing that starting from the beginning and I do believe she's actually hosting or co-hosting a Harry Potter knit along if I'm not mistaken so if you guys have if you're already having Harry Potter withdrawals now that our knit along is over and if you can't wait until September you could go check her out I do believe she has a group on Ravelry so you can find all the information about it there so 100% Inside number 23. Go watch. She's great. Okay. Last week, we showed you guys that we had a journal and some mini skins that we were going to be giving away, and we asked you to comment. There is a winner. So congratulations. Yay! I don't know who you are. <laughs> Sarah's doing that on her pod part of the podcast, so... Congratulations, you guys. There were so many comments. Thank you so much for that. It was re very refreshing to see how many of you are enjoying the new segments and the new way that we're doing things. And just to hear the comments and to get some new suggestions on things that you guys would like to see. So thank you so much for doing that. We did decide that because we weren't going to be podcasting together, we still wanted to be able to answer one of those questions. So we pulled a question and if you go and watch Sarah's part of the podcast, she will announce the winner. So the winner will be announced over there, and then she'll also answer this question. But we pulled a question from Nimble Sticks Knits. Yes, Nimble Sticks Knits. And I'm going to read the question so that I have it all correct. It says, I would like you to share some tools you like and or use on a regular basis in your knitting. And do you prefer one kind or size of needles over another and why? So for me, I'm going to answer the second part of your question first. So needles. When I first started knitting, I was primarily a bamboo person. I loved my harmonies and used them on everything. I still really enjoy them for certain things. I'm going to be using them for my sweater. And I did just use them for my shawl. And I, I do still enjoy them. But primarily, I have become a metal needle person and almost 100% of the time it's my Haya Haya Sharps. I like how quick the knitting is with them. I like how smooth they are. I can honestly say I like the stitch definition and the fabric that I get from those more than what I get from my bamboos. So for me, I'm a Haya Haya girl. There are some needles that I still would really like to try. I'd like to try Chow Gu. I've never tried those. And I would like to try the carbons. I haven't tried those either. Sarah has fallen in love with those, so she recommends those. But yeah, I am, I'm definitely a metal knitter. Metal needle knitter. As far as sizes, uh, this needles that I have the majority of in my, my knitting stash would be... I have a lot of twos. I have fives, sixes, and not, and eights. And for me, that's because I knit all of my socks on twos. And I knit my Oh Memories blanket on a size two as well. So anytime I want to have any of those going, I have to have twos. So I have, I have quite a few of those. And then for me, because I am, for the most part, I mean, I do, of course, knit all types of projects. But I'm, I am a shawl knitter at heart. I... I use a lot of fives and sixes because I prefer those for the fabric and the, and the gauge. 
Sorry, I was trying really hard to make it through the whole thing without taking a drink, but I feel like I'm talking so much more that Sarah, when Sarah's not here, so. Um, and then I knit a lot of hats, and so I generally knit most of my hats on an eight, so I have a lot of those as well. Some sizes that I don't really have very many of. I only have one size zero, and I've only ever knit one thing with that. I don't have any ones, which Sarah uses all the time for socks, and I don't, I don't have any of those. And I don't really have anything more than an 11. I have, I have one size 11 and one size 13, but those are on my bamboos. I don't have those with my, with my Haya Hayas. So I'm definitely lacking anything smaller than a 2 and anything bigger really than a 10. So I don't use those as much. And then to the second part, as far as tools go, I don't know that the things I'm going to show I would necessarily consider tools, but they are things that I, for the most part, always have with me when I'm knitting. The first is band-aids, and I have this cute little tin. These are Jane Austen band-aids, because I love Jane Austen. I'm a Jane Austen girl. And I got these in a swap from Saratoga Knitting a long time ago. And in here, I still do have some of the Jane Austen band-aids because I'm kind of hoarding them, but I have Mickey Mouse ones and Princess ones as well because I also like Disney. I'm kind of a geek, you guys. I, because I am a high, a high, a sharps girl, I stab this finger all the time or sometimes even cut my thumb like swiping the needle across because when they say sharps, they're not kidding. They're sharp. So I always have band-aids because... I will forever and always stab myself. And if I don't have them, then I have to stop and take a break because I'll just continue to stick the needle back into the same hole. So I will wear band-aids on my finger a lot. So I always have these with me. And then I, when I first started knitting, I really liked dangly stitch markers. The more I knit, the less I enjoy those. I will still use them like on the center spine of a shawl or at the very ends of a shawl. But if I'm knitting anything in the round generally, I just like the little tiny um, jump ring stitch markers or the little skinny silver ones that have the bead. But when I'm knitting things that I have to keep track of my progress, like socks or scarves, um, or if I simply just want to know how much I've knit at a certain time, like if I'm if I'm trying to get to a certain point on my projects, I really enjoy progress keepers. And so I really like the ones that have the little lobster claw on them. And this one is actually one of my favorites. It's this little squid, jellyfish, whatever he is. And I got this in a swap package. But I really love these for keeping track of where I'm at. Um, for keeping track of how far I've knit on something in a day. So I for the most part, always have one of those on any project that I'm working on. And then the last thing is this. This one is from Lolo Bar, or this one is a Lolo Bar from Barmaids. And because I dye so much yarn and do work with the fibers so much, my hands get very dry. So I love these hard lotion bars. And I will usually always have one of these. I have some from Lolo Bar. I have some from... I have some from my cousin Jackie's shop, but for me those are perfect because my hands will get dry and you just stick them in, let the heat of your hands warm them up, rub them on, and for me it's better than using lotion because it doesn't make my hands oily, it doesn't then rub off on my yarn and make my yarn oily, so I think those are great. So I always have one of those as well. Um, some other tools, I generally always have a pair of fingernail clippers, one for my fingernails if I snag one, but also because I like to cut my yarn that way. I don't always like to use scissors or to break it, so I use those. And then I love my little darning needles, and I have a little tin of them that I generally carry around with me. So those are some tools that I use. I can't think of any others that I use on a regular basis. So I think those are it. So I also had a question, and my question was, what is your go-to knitting environment? 
Like, do you like to have the TV on? Do you like to listen to music? Do you like to be in a knitting group? And I have to say, if it were a perfect world and I could choose any knitting environment, it would 100% always be a knitting group. I love getting together and knitting with other people who are enjoying the same craft as you, who are encouraging you to try new things. It's fun to sit there and see what they're working on. It's fun to show them what you're working on. Like I was saying on the last episode, the reason I stuck with knitting was that you could take it everywhere and it could be a social thing. And I love that. I love going to Sarah's house and knitting. I love getting together with new knitters, old knitters. Everybody has a little bit something different to offer. And I think there's just something so relaxing and rewarding and almost uplifting and refreshing about getting together and enjoying the craft that you love so much with people who love it just as much. So if I could choose any knitting environment to always have, it would of course be that one. Because I can't, of course, go to a knitting group all the time. I do knit a lot in front of the TV when my husband is home in the evenings and we'll be watching something. I don't knit a lot during the day in front of the TV because I'm homeschooling the kids or the kids are running around. So I will just sit at the table with the kids while they're doing their thing and do that. But I knit everywhere now. I knit in the car. Um, just today I was dyeing yarn and I was standing at the counter while I was dyeing it knitting on my hat. So I really will knit anywhere. <laughs> but I don't, I don't necessarily think I have an environment that is constant all the time. I don't always have the same surrounding when I'm knitting, but if I could choose one that was my go-to, it would for sure be in a knitting group. So, but I think that's it this guy, this week, guys. Like I said, this is only part one, so if you want to hear all of Sarah's projects that she's been working on, if you want to find out who the winner was, if you want to hear her recommendation, then please stick around for part two. It should be uploaded at about the same time or right after mine. So there will be part one and part two of episode 51. So again, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with Sarah. And next week we'll be back to doing it together. So hopefully you guys didn't hate it this way. We probably won't do it this way too often, but it could happen a couple times because soccer is coming and it makes it a little hard to go back and forth. So... Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Bye. Happy knitting. <laughs>